What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Debbie Royale, your ultimate source for college football and Debbie leagues, and just pretty much anything to do with college football and your dynasty leagues as well. I'm Kevin Coleman. I'm here with my co-host, Jay Stein. We've got an action-packed episode. We're mocking it up, and we're dropping this on YouTube as well, and we're going to be doing a 2025 rookie mock draft based on the first four weeks of the college football season, we got a data set. And Jay's all about data. We got some data set. We got some We got some numbers out there to give you. And then we're going to go guys that didn't make our board off the first round. Um, some two players moved up into our first round. We did this preseason. Two players have dropped out. We're going to be talking about that. And we're just going to get into it. So if you play fantasy, if you play Debbie, if you like college football, if you like fantasy football, kind of dive into Dynasty. What does those first rounds look like right now? Will you trade picks? We got that all on this show. We're excited to bring it to you. All right, like I said, 2025 rookie mock draft, 12 team super flex, tight end premium ish, like not a big premium, but tight end premium is in there. Um, and we're going into it and talking about these guys. Now, uh, I had the first pick because I'm older. Or actually, no, I'm not older than Jay. Never mind. I forgot. I just I just look older. That's the life of an educator. Um, so we had I had the 101. I took wide receiver Ted Aroa McMillan from Arizona right now. Uh, and and I think Really coming into it, him and Luther Burden, we we were kind of both of those guys there. This is super flex. I know we're gonna get comments and the you know, quarterback is king, but right now I'm not comfortable drafting the quarterback at 101 with these wide receivers on the board. That's just not where I'm at. On the year, he's played three games, you know, 33 targets already, 23 receptions, 400. 53 yards and four touchdowns had a huge game in that first week kind of shot him up boards um defenses are definitely keying on him more and arizona had a bad loss to kansas state and i don't know what to make of that now that kansas state got their butts kicked by byu either byu is much better than what he anticipated or you know the kansas state game for arizona is an outlier but even in that Kansas State game, he had 11 catches, 138 yards. You know, we've talked about him many, many Mike Evans. We've kind of talked about kind of that ability of him, 6'5", 215, true junior, very, very talented. Even his, even last year, he had 1,300 yards, almost 1,400 yards receiving and 10 touchdowns. Two years ago as a true freshman, still had 81 targets, 40 catches almost, 702 yards, 18 average. So he's been there. I think right now, Tet to me is that 101. I think you could kind of pencil him in there. Most mocks have him as a top 10 guy. I know we're doing a mock on our on our draft show next week when and he definitely found himself in that top 10. So I'll go Tet here. Any any arguments from you, Jay, on terms of where Tet's at, or you think this is the solidified 101 right now? No arguments that he's won right now, um, but I do think that there's a one-two tier here. So Tet and Luther, I do think, are a tier. So mm -hmm. Luther maybe hasn't gotten off to the hardest, hardest, um, uh, the the best uh, year this year uh, statistically. Mm -hmm. But I do think that over the course of the season, that that he'll probably catch up, and we might be talking about these one one A one B type of thing here. But yeah, right now, uh, clearly Tet McMillan at one point oh one. Yeah, I, I think that's where you where you're at. And I think this is generally speaking where the 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 format's going. We talk about dynasty wide receivers. Malik Neighbors not talking about being a top five guy already. Some people out there. So Tet's really coming into that and getting that top ten capital. I'm pretty comfortable with where he's at and where he's out there on boards when you're looking at him. Um and just look at kind of the numbers, you have to like it there. So you kind of already mentioned it. You had the second pick. Where are you leaning at the one oh two? Yeah, I'm going uh Luther Burden with one point oh two. Um I do think this is a top tier. Uh, there's um, a lot of good running backs in the cl this class. There's maybe th uh, two, three, four, five wide receivers that I'm excited about, but I do think there's a top tier of wide receivers, and these yeah. two are the top tier. Um, so Luther Burden, he's a third year. Uh, he plays at Missouri. He's a wide receiver. He's, he'll be 21 years old in December, 5'11", 205 pounds, 28.6 BMI. In Mock Draft Database, he's sort of – consistently in that first round mm -hmm. um uh, and in my stein index that we talked about preseason you can go and listen to that episode about sort of my whole process about how i come up with that um in one of our one of our episodes he's a tier one so i got luther and and t mac in that tier one here yeah. so uh burden uh, the way i see it he's a really excellent creator after the catch and he's a playmaker with the ball in his hands he's getting a lot of comps to debo right now 
Um, I kind of see a little bit of GJ Moore, um, Jamar Chase tied kind of to his game, but even if it's Debo, um, that that's a really good, um, NFL player that you're getting at, at a really young age. Um, so in 2024 so far, like I said, um, it hasn't, he hasn't gone off like Tet yet. No. Um, but I do think it's coming. I do think that he's probably going to get up there. But right now he's got 26 targets, 19 receptions, 257 yards, four TDs receiving and one rush TD. He does have that rushing capability. You see he makes a lot of plays around the line of scrimmage and then has a, a tremendous yak ability. So he's got that 8.1 yak, um, uh, which is a standout, I think. Um, uh, his first year, he didn't play much in the slot, but his second two years, he played. he's played a lot in the slot. Um, so this year is 86% slot rate. Last year was an 82% slot rate. Um, and he's primi- primarily that low dot player. So just that all those characteristics that you'd find in a really good slot wide receiver, low dot, high slot rate, and then good yak. Um, that's what you see out of out of um, Luther Burden. And that's what you can expect probably in the NFL, which actually kind of plays a lot into what, you know, some of the NFL um, strategies that are going on right now. And he might be somebody that is favored by some of these NFL franchises. So I do think he kind of right now fits that first round draft capital perspective. Um, So far this year, it's been sufficient. I would love to think for things to improve for him to increase those accounting stats so far this year. This year, he's got 17% target share, 2.65 yards per route run, which is Good. Uh, love to see it higher, but 2.65 is pretty good. Um, a 27 targets per route run, which is uh, 0.27 yard targets per route run, which is pretty good. Uh, 10% first downs per route run. 1.7 yards uh, reception yards per team pass attempt, which is that's okay. I love to see that bump up. So you know he has the f- uh, four receiving TDs and one rush TD. Love to see it come out more than just the dominator. I'd love to see him get more uh, reception yards this season. Um, and uh, you know, so like this is. This is a good good player. This year it hasn't quite in 2024. The stats haven't quite lived up to what we saw last year, mm. uh, but last year was a phenomenal year. He he met all of these metrics that we're looking at from an age adjusted basis: reception yards per team, pass attempt, weighted dominator, and EPA per play. And this year he's just he's just missing on the reception yards per team, pass attempt, but the weighted dominator, EPA per play, weighted dominator from the touchdown perspective, and the EPA per play is is actually looking good on an age adjusted basis. So. Like the profile is there to be great here um, and, and him being a first round um, um, wide receiver, if that's the case, um, that's certainly where they're having him mocked right now. Um, it looks like a great profile and kind of deserves it to be in that tier one. Just like to see some more stuff this year, like to see it a little bit more in the numbers this year um, since last year was so great. Well, as always, I got to be the voice of reason with the numbers. Why Why are the numbers not there, right? Why are the context for that? I mean, Missouri's offense has been bad this year. Brady Cook has not been great. I think he's been inefficient when you're looking at the numbers overall. Like, this ADOT's not great, not pushing the ball down the field. They just have not gotten that going. And when you're looking at the games that Luther played in, because I was kind of – well, first, I bet on Luther a lot this year, so I've watched some of his games. But when you're looking at it, Murray State didn't really need him. Four for five and targets to receptions, really good there. Had that touchdown. Buffalo, he was sick, so he didn't play the whole second half or almost like three quarters of that game. So obviously, we didn't get out there. But when you needed it, Boston College, like that game was a competitive game. He had eight targets. He had a touchdown, 117 yards, and they schemed him. And when you look at yards per reception, he almost had 20 in that game. Like, I thought that was one of his best games of his career, to be honest with you. Like, I thought he did really well in that game um and in Vanderbilt six receptions 10 targets but when they needed that win they almost lost the freaking Vanderbilt you know they got the ball they got it to him he scored those two touchdowns so like contextually yeah we want to see the numbers improve I think he's done enough already we even talked about it his freshman year when we did this a couple years ago ways way to dominate already we like that we'd like to see there because he scores touchdowns this dude scores touchdowns I think that is the other thing to note too when we're talking about fantasy, that's what we want to see. He's got 19 touchdowns already in three years. Um, some guys were like, remember Pickens? He had like four or whatever the case may be when we're looking at their profiles. <laughs> Burden's got the profile. So, yeah, I, I think he's still there. I, I, I know some people kind of wish-washy on him, though. But to me, him and Ted are in that same tier. Like, I, I don't have him outside those two tiers there. I think it's going to be matter, you know, a fact of who gets these guys. How are they going to use them there? Um, but Luther, yeah, I hear the Debo stuff. But I think he's a better receiver. I think he's a better, has a profile as a better receiver than, than Debo did in college. I think Luther can be kind of that, that hybrid mix there. I like the DJ Moore call out, too. I think that's a good one in there. Now, I do want to talk about this because we're going to get in my pick here. Uh, this is the only quarterback drafted uh, in the first round, which 
is not going to happen. We understand that going into it, but this is more of a talent based. Hey, who do you feel comfortable taking right now at this point? Now, you might not like that we took him as high, but at 103, we have Quinn Ewers, Texas, you know, redshirt junior. I didn't put his numbers here on the screen if you're watching on YouTube for his freshman year because he played one game at Ohio State, basically redshirted, um, and then went to Texas. Now, had a very good year, right, this year. He looked great. I mean, they got Texas rolling. He went in there and whooped the crap out of Michigan, and it was a great game, and we liked that. But then again, Quinn Ewers gets hurt, right? Like, we've kind of mentioned this a few times with him, and I'm not going to say a guy gets injury prone, but damn it. Sometimes these guys just get injured and you're and you're wondering like, hey, you know, and he, and he didn't even get injured, like getting sacked or on a pass. It was a handoff. It was a stretch handoff and he kind of messes oblique. And now Arch Manning's in there looking pretty good against two pretty not great opponents, UTSA in this last week as well. Um, but I think that Michigan game to me stands out, you know, 24 for 36, looked very good. The three touchdowns passing grade was 78.3, no turnover worthy plays. He's only really had one turnover worthy play. Um, he had a couple interceptions, but you know, you saw him better there manipulating the pocket really well. I liked what I saw from him in that Michigan for sure. And Michigan looked very good against USC this last week. So I think part of that is like Texas is just a very good football program. And I think Quinn is a big part of that. I do think he comes back. I know he's got the big game coming up against Oklahoma, Georgia. Those games are really going to tell us a lot about Quinn Ewers if he comes back healthy. But I'm I'm okay saying Quinn is the QB1 of this class right now. I think based on what we've seen on the field from a lot of these guys, we're going to mention, we're going to go through the 25 quarterbacks at the end of this episode and kind of talk about guys that we didn't put in, maybe we should have. The one note is Carson Beck fell out, right? Carson Beck was kind of up here in this range. Um, the last time we did this, he's kind of fallen off based on his play. But I'm okay having Quinn at 103 based on what we've seen on the field so far. Will that change? Maybe, possibly, but he is definitely, I think he is, him and Cam Ward and some of these other guys based on play. I mean, he's right there. And I think Quinn, just based on that upside and NFL pedigree that I think he's going to get, I have him at 103. Yeah, the quarterbacks scare me this year. Um, it's it's There's no clear cut. And I do think Quinn is probably would be probably be my highest rated quarterback right now. Yeah. And, and Carson Beck is the guy that falls off. But, um, you know, like Jackson Dart and Cam Ward look, good on all the statistical measures and then drew all our looks pretty good as well and there's 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 a whole bunch of qbs to talk about but there's none that i'm like super confident in yeah. right at this moment right now and i think we got a at this particular position for this season i think we got a long way to go before we're ready to make the call on quarterback about who's going to be qb1 right now i think you're right quinn ewers but i think the rest of our mock draft is going to display that we have low confidence in some of these other guys um, getting in the, to, but eventually some of these guys are going to get drafted in the first round and be potential starters in the NFL. And we're probably because it's a super flex, we're probably going to move them up. But right now we're just not confident in who those, who those guys are going to be um, yeah. even though some are playing pretty well. All right. Let me t go ahead and tell us who's your love crush at 104. Who you, who you yeah, got I think, at 104? I, I think I might be on an island on this one. And, <laughs> and uh, in in the summer, I picked him at three. In this this draft, I'm picking him at four. Here, I'm going with Emeka Buka, wide receiver out of Ohio State. He is a fourth year wide receiver, which in my model does get dinged a little bit. Um, he'll be 22 in mid October. He's 6'1", 205 pounds, 27 point or 27 BMI. In mock draft debate database, they still have him as a first rounder. So. Um, out there grinding all those mocks. They're still going in the first round. It's the late first round, but it's the first round. He is the, I, I'd say, the highest guy in my next tier of mm. wide receivers. And, uh, you know, there's a couple other guys, but for the most part, I think there's not very much depth in the wide receiver class compared to the running backs. And so I felt more comfortable taking this guy here and then just hammering the depth at, depth at running back mm. uh, towards the later end of this draft. So, um, you know, the, the comment that I'll always make is that I, I think that Abuka is really good and he gets forgotten about a lot. Um, there's a lot of talent at Ohio State, um, but he has sort of kept up pace. He just doesn't seem to be the flashy guy that everybody sort of concentrates on. So in 2000, uh, in 2022, he played with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, the quarterback was CJ Stroud at the time. Now the quarterback of the Houston Texans, he's doing pretty well. Um, and, uh, and Emeka Abuka, their sophomore year, um, kept base with Marvin Harrison Jr. that year. So like this from a staff perspective, he was right up there with Marvin Harrison Jr. and everything that, that that he was doing. So like it was good. His third year, he he kind of had the injury bug and then Marvin goes off to the NFL. And, um, and you know, th this fourth year, he's off to a pretty good start. Um, yeah. I, but I just think he gets slept on and he gets forgotten about. And I think I'm going to be here on this island for the whole season. 
but he he looks good, and I'm much higher on them than consensus. Here's here's what I'd say. Okay, so this season we're all enamored with Jeremiah Smith, and there are definitely things to like about Jeremiah Smith. But what what you, what gets missed is that Emeka Abuka is right up there with most stats for Ohio State's wide receiver core. Uh, so you know, like all that love that you're getting out of this freshman, uh, Emeka is also putting up similar numbers. Um, uh, this does happen to be his fourth year, so you'd expect him to have much higher numbers. And this is really good from a freshman, but mm. like, just nobody even says any a word about him. So. Uh, Mecca Buka this year uh, is is higher than in Jeremiah Smith in PFF grade, receiving grade, target share. Um, they're both pretty similar, but you know he's higher. Um, yards per route run, first downs per route run, targets per route run, yak per per reception. So then he's also fairly similar. Uh, Smith is a little bit higher than a Mecca on these, but they're very very similar stats. Yards per game, yards per reception, reception yards per team pass attempt, weighted dominator, very similar. Um, and, and then, um, and then Smith is be- beating Abuka and a bunch of things, but just sort of categories that you wouldn't even think of that Emeka Abuka is beating Jeremiah Smith in. And we're all like, uh, Jeremiah Smith is the best thing ever. Um, but you know, Abuka is yeah. putting up similar numbers, um, this year. So like, uh, 21 per tar- target percent target share. We'd love to see that higher. Um, he has a ex- extremely high yards per route run at 4.67, this year, uh, 0.33 targets per route run, 0.19 first downs per route run, 2.96 reception yards per team pass attempt, and 1.225 EPA per play. These are great numbers, and if he continues this for the rest of the season, I can see him locking in that first round status and sort of that that just slightly next tier to the Luther and Tet McMillan show here. And don't forget, this guy had a phenomenal year too. So early yeah. breakout from Emeka Abuka. And yeah, I get it. Fourth year, older, um, sort of dings in my process, process, but the stats and the production were there at Ohio state competing at the high, competing with the highest level in Marvin Harrison jr. And some of these other guys, um, Carnell Tate, Jeremiah Smith, and still become commanding a good share of the offense. So I like him. I'm going to be on my Island uh, on Emeka Abuka. And my, my hope is that, you know, we stay away from the injuries. We continue this pace and he puts up another good season. You're not on an island, Jay. I'm with you. I like Emeka. Like, I, you know, when we're going through this mock, this process, like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I mean, this is a fine pick because I think he very, he has a very, very safe floor. I think as a prospect, we've seen him dominate. You saw, you, we saw the breakout already. We know that. We know he can create separation in the slot. We know he's going to create demand targets. And like, to me, I mean, at 104, you might want something a little higher ceiling, but at this point, we just don't know what that is. It's probably going to be a quarterback or someone that gets drafted in the first round. But even then, like the high floor thing, it matters. I think he's a very solid. Like, if you told me a Mechabuka in like 10 years was like, oh, fantasy wide receiver two for the next 10 years, I'd be like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, because he does the little things and you see it. So, like, yeah, I agree. I think he's right in there. I think that I really think that in terms of the mock overall, 101, 102 is the tier, right? And then it just gets muddled. Like there's from 103 on, depending on the quarterbacks, whatever uh, you think of the running backs or however that plays out. I do think that there's not really a lot of distinguishment. So if you look at it, you have 25 first, you know, people will say, oh, it's going to be a late first. It's pretty muddled even in the middle. Like if you think you're in the mid tier and you want to kind of make that run, but you're like, hey, what happens if it falls in that 108, 109? Right now, I would say that if there's a lot of moving pieces based on the running back and quarterback room, like I do think it gets more valuable if the quarterbacks pan out and draft capital, right? They get drafted in the first and we're going to see that. So there's always a little bit of risk there. But I would say though, if it's a true late first and you're like, yeah, I'm a contender here, I can be one of the three or four teams remaining. I'm very comfortable shipping those off right now, just based on the makeup, just based on the makeup of this class. Cause I think it is top heavy with true playmakers and guys right now based on that. But yeah, I'm, I'm good with the Mecca. You're not on an Island. I'm hanging out there. I'm more of like on the boat watching you build the, build the shelter. <laughs> um, and I'm like, Hey, should I go help him? Like, how, how, what, what should I do out there? Um, that's generally speaking where I'm at with him. But uh, what I'd say is, um, you know, in terms of strategy wise, I, I, Count 10 running backs that I'm excited about right now that I think could be first round um, draft picks at some point, um, given if they keep going. And, you know, from a strategy perspective, if there's 10 guys that you're pretty excited about, you might as and there's a lot less wide receivers that I'm excited about, you might as well just kind of select the wide receivers that you're comfortable with and then grab the guy. Maybe you don't get your first choice, but there's there's some good running backs yeah. that, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, when we're drafting, 
um, next May um, on these players. There, there, there'll probably be a running back here at 1.03 or or 1.04 or uh, or a quarterback like you mentioned. But right now the depth is at running back, so I'll I'll just I'll just pound running back at the end of the first round into the second round um, and and just get the lock in the two wide receivers that I'm most excited about getting. Yeah, no, 100%. All right, let's go to 105. I'm sticking wide receiver. I'm taking Isaiah Bond. Um, I really like Isaiah Bond from Texas, junior, 5'11", 180. This is a projection pick, though, because I do think that from the number standpoint, production's been okay this year. So when you're looking at just the raw numbers, you know, just kind of going through here, 15 catches on 20 targets, so been efficient. We like that. 290 yards. Yeah, uh, The thing for me, though, Yards per reception, 19.3. This dude's a big playmaker. Like when you're thinking of like, what can he do? Top speed over 20 miles per hour, taking screens and bubble screens and really kind of producing there. Um, You have to like that. You know, he's pretty, he's kind of versatile, 24% in the slot. And then when you're looking at out wide, about 73%, he is at that out wide guy. Um, He really reminds me, and this is so lazy, but A.D. Mitchell kind of like in that offense, he's kind of playing that role now, that kind of that deep threat guy. But I do think that he has kind of that Xavier Worthy type bubble screen go guy. Like, I think there's two things there. I do think they're going to use him more once, you know, when Quinn Ewers comes back, but obviously in the bigger games that we're seeing here, I think that he's going to be able to kind of adapt there. 3.19 um, yards per hour run. You like that. 11.8 ADOT. He had an outlier one at 31 and a, you know, 1.2 in another game. So definitely. You, you see the outliers come in there, so that's pretty close there. I like Isaiah Bond. I do think that he is talented. I think he's going to play his way into the first round if he continues his play. And I do still think he gets over 1,000 yards. I know you know he hasn't produced a ton. He's almost at 300. Um, but I do think he can hit that, especially in this offense. I think they're spreading around like we expected them to do. But as the SEC rolls around, I think Bond's going to be more involved in that. And I don't mind taking Isaiah Bond right now based on his talent, his upside at this spot. Yeah, like we've talked a couple of times about yeah. Isaiah Bond being a riser in our shows. And so, you know, there's there I think now that you've mentioned Isaiah Bond, I think there's probably one more wide receiver that is a wide receiver cornerback, so there's uncertain <laughs> uncertainty there. Yeah. Um, but there's probably one more that's like interesting uh, and now you have sort of where we're going to get to, which is basically a run of running backs. Go All right, let's talk about the running backs. Let's start at 106. Uh, who is your first running back off the board? Uh, this was not how I felt at the beginning of the season and going into the season, but I'm going to go with Ashton Genty, um, out of Boise state. This is his third year. He'll be 21 in early December. Um, he's five, nine, 215. Hold on. I want, I want everybody to know Jay goes deep on the, or the, the birthdays. Like he is sat yeah. here looking at birth certificates. He wants to make sure no. yeah. he's got their, their date down pat for those, for those spreadsheets to make sure they are perfect. So he's 21. When, when is he going to turn 21? In early December. Okay, perfect. So yeah. that's a great yeah. asset right there. Yeah. Well, okay. So he'll go through his entire or most of his um, uh, rookie season at 21 years old, which is yeah. – that's great. Um, assuming he declares next year, which I think we're, we're he's likely. He's So he's 5'9", 215 pounds, 31.7 BMI. Uh, Mock Draft Database has him as a first rounder here. Um, and in the Stein index before the preseason, I had him at, um, at tier three, but I have to be moving him up at a tier two just based on what we've seen so far. I was a, like a group of five lower competition sort of hater towards Ashton Denty, but I think that that turned around for me so far this season. Um, but I would mention that, um, although I do like a lot of these running backs and I think that they'll be um, very good um, dynasty NFL assets for you. I am still concerned about the positional premium that the NFL puts on running backs, and I'm not sure how many of these guys actually end up in the first round, but right now, Genty is the one that uh, so far mocking, it looks like a first rounder, but I, I just would, my one word of caution is second round running backs and third round running backs. I, I like a lot too. So um, that I, I would just say that he does profile as a, a three down back and he does have the receiving skills necessary to be a good fantasy back in the NFL so far this year. I think we have to run through these stats because it's pretty remarkable um 56 attempts 586 yards nine touchdowns 195 yards per game 10.5 yards per attempt he's first in yards per team play first in pff rush grade first in yards after contact per attempt fourth in missed tackles force per attempt first in breakaway percentage and third in the pff elusive grading 
This is this is a phenomenal performance through three games, and one of those games was against Oregon. So you know, level of competition. We're talking about Oregon here, uh, Big Ten, I guess you say. I don't Big know. Ten now. Um, yeah, we're yeah, in the Big yeah. Ten country now. Um, uh, 192 yards and three touchdowns against Oregon, which is yeah. you know that's okay. So we're we've upped our level here. Um, I don't think you can make a competition argument. Maybe, maybe you can, but um, you know, he's putting up these big games, even against the tougher opponents that mm-hmm. you see. So um, for age adjusted metrics, which, you know, if you want to learn more about that, go and watch the process episode, but in years one, two, and three, he was above the line for yards per team play in years one and two, he's above the receiving reception market share and year three, he's very, very close. So this year he's very, very close. I think that that probably bumps up again up there. Um, he is Boise State, the Boise State offense. That is him. That yeah. it mo- all, it all goes through him. So I, I imagine that 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 continues. Um, they're one of the ones that I look at. Um, the stats is rush yards are expected, um, which is, is how good are you a runner of football? Um, he's he's above zero cumulatively for his for his um, for his career, and especially these last 150 carries that he's had, it's like jumping off the page. He has one of the best cumulative rush yards are expected coming out um so like this is a phenomenal season he's first in so many statistical categories he's doing it to oregon it looks good uh yeah i I have to move him to the top of this running back class and the guy i'm probably most comfortable uh drafting first out of these running backs right now yeah i'm I'm okay with that i think that ashton's done really well this year i was i'm a noted non-power five hater so i i I will still hate like i i will still hate there but you have to you have to love what he's been able to put out there. And I mean he had the receiving stats last year. You saw that. So he can be that three down guy. Um and I'm not really worried about usage. I forget who did it. They they kind of dived into like running back usage. Yeah, he's gonna get a lot of carries, but not that many. And he's like you said, he's young, he has that value there. Um and I mean, even then he only had 220 carries last year. So even if they do give him a lot this year heading into it, uh, I think wear and tear, he's fine. And this is a good spot for him. I, I think that now I wanted to you were talking about where he's getting mocked it's funny when you go to the mocks though because it's basically any team that has a shitty running back they're <laughs> like hey ashley Genty is your guy so like cowboys are on here multiple times and i'm gonna tell you right now as a dallas fan i don't think we're taking a first round running back but you know that's fine chargers on here like multiple times and jk has been yeah. great this year but looking at that contract everything there Bengals, raiders browns and texans are on here which is fine i mean the chiefs are fun the Chiefs would be fun, and that's one of those things that I see there too. But yeah, I mean, in the last 12 mocks, he's been mocked in that first round. Now, part of that probably is that these are just first-round mocks, and people are just going to throw him in there because they're like, hey, I want to talk yep. about Ashton Genty. Yep. Um, I still would probably say he's a second-round guy. I know Christian talks about him possibly in that. If he goes in the first, it's probably 25 or later. Like It's one of those things where he's kind of either getting traded up for um, or maybe possibly a team sitting there is like, hey, this is a luxury pick. We like this kid. Um, and guys like that later can do that, like the Chiefs. Chiefs and those guys that don't have as many holes, they could possibly do that. But I like that pick there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go 107. I took Quinshawn Judkins, running back from Ohio State. A little bit of a change for me in terms of Travion or Quinshawn. Uh, but Quinshawn's looked really good this year, man. Like he is, he's, he's a, I hate Ohio State so damn much. I want everybody <laughs> to know that because when I watched him play, I'm just like, man, they just have a two headed monster. Him and Tra- um, Travion have looked amazing together. I think that they're actually going to work well together. Like we've mentioned multiple times, uh, taking usage away from each other, just kind of being efficient with that. Um, the last game against Marshall, Judkins looked really good. 14 attempts, 173 yards, and two touchdowns. Missed tackle force. He already has 16. And I think for him, the explosive runs, right? He's already had 11, 10 plus more explosive runs. You see that really well. Does well in zone and gap. Like he's very consistent there. 19 zone runs, 17 gaps. You see versatility in an offense. You like to see that as well. Um, and an elusive ability, 171.5 elusive rating. He does well in open space. He's not having to do a ton like at Ole Miss. Like, hey, here's the ball 30 times. He doesn't have to do that anymore. He's efficient in this offense. And with this passing offense, man, it opens up the boxes. Like, I don't think he's ever seen this less, this many or not as many guys in the box before. Like, you're just seeing these guys there now. Haven't played shit. So let's be clear, Ohio State fans. Like you guys have played Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall, but we can't knock guys for just playing who's in front of them. And he's looked really good. I think that when you look at his yards per attempt, 9.3, which can be mis- misleading at times in terms of 
college, but yards after contact per attempt, almost four. I mean, that's pretty incredible when you're looking at him overall. So I'll take Jenkins. He's a stud. I mean, he is very good there. I know people are mentioning him being mocked in that first round as well, but very talented. These two guys back to back. I think they, they deserve these spots. Yeah, I agree with uh, Ashton Genty, Quinchon Jackson. I think Quinchon Jackson this year so far, I think nobody can argue that he's outplayed Travion Henderson yeah. so far. Um, and so Just, I do think that, yeah. Th- there's a, there's a, are you going to talk about the receiving side for Travion? Is that where you're going to yeah, go yeah. probably? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let you go. Let's you just, you say Travion, you're going to go Travion one away. We could talk about both of these. Guys. Yeah. I'm going to go Travion. So like, I guess he's clearly outplayed. And then from a, a prospect perspective, Quinchon Jackson's um, is one year younger. Yeah. Um, so he's only done three years um, and Travion's had some injury issues. Although yeah. Travion did have, one of the best statistical analytical um, performances as a freshman. It's been a couple of years since then that, <laughs> you know, you can't ride that. Now I, my model weighs those, that early performance really highly, but now we're talking about the fourth year, a lot of injuries and, mm. and that stuff. But this year so far, Judkins outplaying um, Travion Henderson. We'll see if that's the way it ends up at the end of the year. But I do think that this continues to be a backfield where both players are playing a significant amount of Mm -hmm. snaps and they will be taking production away from each other. And when you take the production away, then you have to kind of go by evaluating the talent and where these guys get it get drafted in the in the NFL draft as as your main emphasis in terms of ranking these two. So I'm going to stick with Travion Henderson. I, I do think that there's this there's a little bit of this like. Um, what he did his freshman year sort of sort of lasting maybe too long and maybe mm-hmm. there's like some warning signs here but I still like him um, I like I said there's 10 running backs I like so I'm I'm picking in in the order that I like here but there you could easily rank some of these other running backs above above his so just a rundown here he's he's this is his fourth year he'll be 22 in October he's 5'10 208 pounds 29.8 BMI uh, mock draft database has him as a second rounder this year. He's in my tier two um, and probably gets passed up by Genty and, and Junkins. But, um, um, you know, I, I still like him a lot. Um, so far this year, 207 yards, four touchdowns. He he has been scoring these touchdowns. So they, they are involved in the game. He hasn't been as efficient mm-hmm. as Junkins rushing the ball, but he has been scoring touchdowns. He's got 69 yards per game, 8.6 yards per attempt, 4.6 yards after contact per attempt. So like some of these categories he's beating Junkin Junkins in, but um um but you know like the accounting stats you know Junkins is is quite a bit higher than that, um you know uh, a zero point three eight missed tackles force per attempt this year um he hasn't been involved in the passing game as much but what we'd say about Trayvon in general is that he does have that um, receiving ability um, to his game which it makes him exciting for the NFL um, aspect of that and fantasy. In the NFL. So like, again, this year um, there's a lot of stuff to like. There's some things that are concerning that you'd wish are a little bit higher. He's definitely getting outplayed by Junkins and it makes it just sort of apparent at the moment what's going on uh, like one versus the other. But I do think that this is still a very good NFL fantasy running back prospect. And so I, what I would say is watching Ohio State. Now we have this is our third Ohio State player in the first round that we have. Is there's a lot of talent on Ohio State's offense, and the 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 production gets shared. And so if there's going to be like a an exception, uh, uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, a teammate exceptions to some of these players, it's probably going to be out of the Ohio State Buckeyes here this year. Um, and I don't like to make exceptions very often, but this is, this is probably one of the situations where there's just too much talent, too much NFL talent, where you, you, at the end of the year, you might have to make exceptions because of how much some of these players, you know, shared the production within the team. Yeah. And let's be clear. It's a very big cop out that I'm going to say right now. So I want everybody to know it's not me saying it. These guys like who, where they go, where they land is going to be huge for a lot of them. Because like, if I know Travion's going to land somewhere where they're going to use him as a passing threat and as a three down guy, and and he goes to a quarterback that likes to dump the football off, I'd probably rank him a little higher than Jenkins. Like that's just how it goes. Like, I think they're very close in that tier. And I know people roll their eyes and say, Oh, landing spot. I'd like to find out if they're good beforehand. I don't want to hear that crap because we've seen this multiple times where it's like, yeah, I mean, if you're playing Debbie and these type of things, you, you probably drafted Henderson 
for that receiving ability. That's part of it. That's part of his profile. So if you think that's better than Judkins from a pure just three down guy, you would have him ranked there. But I think these three guys to me are very close. I think that I think there is a tier with these three guys, though. Like, I do think that these three guys are probably my running back tier. Um, I like a lot of other guys like Jay talked about in this class and maybe some guys in the first round that we missed on that people are like, hey, why aren't they there? But I do think right now, just based on what they've done before, right, with Judkins and, and Henderson's profile beforehand, Genty's profile now, production profile, what they could do on the field, these three guys feel like a little bit of a tier, like just a little. I, I wouldn't say it's a huge, massive gap, but there is definitely a tier in that range. Um, all right, I couldn't go. I cannot watch three Ohio State players get drafted without <laughs> taking a Michigan uh, guy. I'm taking Colson Loveland because I've been on Colson Loveland for like the last few years. Uh, he did not play in this last game against USC, and they missed him there, but they still won. Uh, this is a really bad passing attack. I don't know if Jay's watched Michigan's passing attack this year. Uh, I have unfortunately had to watch every snap. And he's still producing, right? You know, when you're looking at him, 19 catches for 24 targets, been very efficient there, 187 yards, um, a touchdown. But I think for me, the one thing I've noticed about him that I've liked, they've really used him in the slot more, 45% this year in the slot, which I think from a fantasy perspective, you want you want that. You want that pass catching tight end. Similar, he's not Brock Bowers, but similar to what we've seen with Brock Bowers in Las Vegas. I think that's something to note there. He catches everything thrown his way. He's a very, very good zone buster. I think he's going to do good moving the chains. Um, ADOT's been pretty good. Again, with Loveland, we might not know what his ceiling is because this Michigan passing offense, even with JJ there, was not great. I think that's just something to note. Like it's efficient, but it's not necessarily going to produce these huge produ producers from the position and just in the passing attack. That's just really where it's at. And I, I, I still think Loveland's clear tight end one. I know other people out there, I've seen different takes in terms of tight ends, Luke Lachey as well, some of these other guys. Um, but I still think Loveland is, is the clear tight end one. I'm okay taking him here at 109. Yeah, I think Loveland is my tight end one as well. There's been a couple of risers that I maybe was a little surprised about this year so far, like Tyler Warren, uh, a Ronda yeah. guy at a Syracuse. But like, we're I, there is tight end premium, but there's I feel like the way you play positional fantasy, I, I there's I just like the de the talent at running back at this point a lot better than some of the the tight ends. But I think tight end Colston Loveland tight end one this year. Um, and I'm excited about what he is in the NFL. Um, you know, th there's, those, there's a lot of need for young tight end production in the NFL. And if uh, I, Colston's shown nothing but the, the right analytical metrics to be, to be considered up there as one of those yeah. young stud um, tight ends in the NFL, I, I hope he gets to be first round draft capital or at least at least day two draft capital, but I'm excited for what he can be and adding another one of those really good tight ends to the mix of those guys. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I know to be clear, I was very between the next guy you pick. So uh, where are you at with one ten? Um, I almost took him there, but again, the Ohio state fan, I might got to get that out of here. So what uh, one ten, where'd you go? I went Nicholas Singleton. Um, you know, Nicholas Singleton had a really good freshman year. Um, Year two, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but um, it wasn't that great. Uh, I know. It wasn't like we expected. Maybe he was injured. Offense. Oh, you don't. Offense. You know. Terrible, offense. terrible, terrible uh, offensive coordinator. Terrible system for a running back <laughs> like Nicholson Singleton. Six foot 230. You know, like he, he was put in bad positions. And now they've opened it up a little bit. So we're excited. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited about him. I had him high in in uh, my Debbie rankings. Um and so I'm excited that it, it feels like, and we've talked about this in the show, you know, he's, he's now trending higher. Um, some really good games so far this season. season so I'm excited. Um, just to give you some background, he's the he's a running back for Penn State. There's another running back at Penn State called Katrin Allen. And there's there's Penn State has a really good offense this year. So you can, you can get excited about some of these players. Um, uh, he's a third year. This will be his third year. He'll turn 21 in January. Um He's six foot, 226 pounds, 30.6 BMI. Mock draft database is low on him. I think they have him as a fourth, fourth rounder so far this season out there with the mocks. I, I think this is one of those guys that he'll be rising throughout the season as people get more and more familiar with, um, you know, what he's done and what he looks like. And, and um, he starts putting up some of those stats that we've seen in the, at least the first two weeks of the season. Um 
And so I have him in my in my stat index. I have him in tier two. So far this year, he's 30, 37 attempts, 314 yards, two touchdowns, 121 yards per game, 8.5 yards per attempt, five yards after contact per attempt, and a 0.3 missed uh, force tackles per attempt. Um, the yards per team play is at 1.83, which is, is good, and a dominated rating of, of 23. Um, so, like, um, numbers-wise, metrics-wise, um, height-weight-wise, like, uh, particularly BMI, it looks it looks pretty good. And uh, from those age-adjusted best uh, metrics, he was above yards per team play in year one and three so far in year three. Um, year two was the the off year. Um, re- reception um, market share, he was close in year two, but um, it, you know he's he doesn't really so far he hasn't really proved out the fact that he can be a, a, a receiving back or have a, a command a, a significant portion of the team's receptions. And so that that's just something to think about. But he's he's a tremendous runner of the football. Yeah. His rush yards are expected has been positive his entire career. It looks really good. So I like Nick single. I, I like Nicholas Singleton. I think that um, he'll be probably probably be a riser. And those two games, the first two games, um, one of the games he put up 81 or uh, 114 yards and the next game, he put up 119 yards. Each of those games, he had a touchdown. Uh, um, and then the next game he put 81 yards. It like, it looks, it looks good. It looks like an NFL running back. I'm excited for him to continue this in, and 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 Penn State like with Drew Aller, um, Tyler Warren, Nicholas Singleton. I think it's they got a pretty good, pretty good offense this year. So watch mm-hmm. out for for the rest of the Big Ten. Penn State's so far is looking pretty good. Yeah, but they still have James Franklin, so you still okay. got that coach. Yeah, you're, you're, you're there, but that offense is great. I mean, that is fantastic. Their their defensive line is one of the best in the country too. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 in on Nick. I think he's great. I think that he definitely is fitting there. I think that that size, his ability to kind of have explosive runs, extend plays, those type of things. He does a very good job. Like I think that extend downs to third down short. He can also be first down guy to kind of create those explosive plays for you. Absolutely. Let's go to 111. Vibe pick, baby. I'm taking Travis Hunter <laughs> from Colorado. I don't know what the hell to do with this kid in terms of uh, dynasty right now, but I do think in IDP, he's number one pick, 101. Probably be pretty easily there. I'm in rookie drafts. But in these drafts, like, I think he's going to go higher than this because I think someone's going to fall in love with this dude. And I think that, you know, I think he wants to do both ways. I think he wants to play wide receiver and corner, and that's what he's going to do. And he's set in that. And I think that NFL teams is going to draft him based on that because he's going to say, don't draft me if you're not going to play me at both. And do from a receiving standpoint, I know that offense isn't great. But you go through the numbers, he has 44 targets and 37 catches. Pretty efficient there. 472 yards already through four games. Five touchdown, receiving grade 83.8. You have to like that. Um, Obviously, he's an out wide guy. Like, that's pretty much what he is. And that's the thing, too. From a receiving standpoint, he's not very nuanced as a route runner in those things. He wins on athleticism, and usually that's a red flag. But this dude's athleticism is better than a lot of guys out there, even at the NFL level, in my opinion. So when you're looking at it and you're trying to figure out, okay, like, will that translate pretty well? I think his athleticism is always going to translate. He's always been the best athlete on the field at any point of his career. So when you're looking at that, you have to like that. And then from drop perspective, he has one drop this year and really with those targets that's pretty good i mean when you're looking at drop percentage you have to like that but on in his career he only has two drops like according to pff stats that's one of those things where it's always nuanced there that's still really really good and if it is a dot 10.2 this year yards per route run 2.64 you have to like that there missed tackles forced at the back end of the first if you're a contender there was much worse picks than this. And so, like, I don't mind betting on that upside. Where does he go? I know in our in our kind of um, real 2025 NFL draft that I'm doing mock, I, I had the Panthers take him. And the first overall, I said, screw it. Just take the best player, Panthers. You guys are terrible anyway. So you might as well take the best player there. Maybe that would go down and based on there. Um, but I just like Travis Hunter's value here. And I don't mind taking the risk. I like having fun in fantasy too. Make fantasy fun again, as my boy Laquan Jones from NFL Network will, will say. Like, make fantasy fun and, and have Travis Hunter on your roster. Yeah, I mean, there's no denying what Travis Hunter has done this season. And it's funny because, like, off season, I put together this, like, tiering, and I had Travis Hunter in Tier 3. And um, I, I wasn't sure whether he, uh, at the time – um, what the draft analysts and you know the fantasy guys were saying was he's primarily a cornerback. He's better at cornerback, and 
Um, you know, you'll 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 be lucky when you get some production out of him and wide receiver. And it's like, why would you take him? Why would you take the risk on Travis Hunter when he's he's going to be a cornerback at the NFL level? And now you see what he can do, where he's basically on the field the entire game playing <laughs> playing cornerback and shutting down uh, wide receivers, and then playing wide receivers and dominating. And you're like, okay, well, this guy is special. This guy is different. This is this all those rules, all those things that we follow, um, don't really apply to this player in particular. I guess the question is, is has it swung too far, right? Um, you know, if he gets that high draft capital, and you know he gets the hype and everything, now are we going to now take him in? the top six of the, the our drafts. I'm not sure. I, I think people there will be probably people that are very mm-hmm. interested yes. in taking him early. And then that my point is that like we've we were swinging too far one way and now we might be swinging too far yeah. the other way. I think where we have him is great. But um if you're gonna start putting him up into the top six, maybe even the top three or top four, that's where I like what I would have my pushback as to if if um, he is going to be playing both ways in the NFL. If they are going to utilize him from that perspective, then you know you 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 probably would want the full time wide receiver over okay. that's a lesser talent than the guy that plays both ways. But th- this type of talent, um, and even with the risk, he's probably worth taking at the end of the first round. I I, I think it's exciting. I'm not sure how I feel about this. We'll see as as we go throughout the season about taking him here. Um, you know, like safety wise, maybe it's easier to take the running backs just because there's a lot of really good ones, but it's hard to deny the talent and what he can be for your fantasy team. And there's tons of upside. If he, if he really does like say, I want to be a full-time wide receiver and sort of spurns the cornerback piece of this going in the NFL, that's exciting. That could be really, really good uh, pick here at the back of the first round. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, I just hey vibes, baby. We're we're talking vibes here. Yeah. We're talking excitement. Yeah. We're having fun there. All right, wrap up this first round for me. Where are you le- leaning in this last pick? Okay, so the last pick is Amari Hampton, and what I'd say is there's a lot of pain in this in this pick because I really do think that this pick could have been one of uh, five other running backs, yeah. but or actually in particular one of three um, running backs that I am really really excited about. So. Uh, call this a placeholder because I think we're going to, I think some of these other running backs are going to jump into the first round and we might have to push some of these other things. Call this a placeholder. I don't want to like um, negate the the positive season that Omari and Hampton is, but there's guys like um, Ollie Gordon. There's guys like Caleb Johnson that are having really great seasons that I think could have been slotted in this um, position. They could, they could have even been picked all the way up at, 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 at like the Travian Anderson, Nick Singleton level. So yeah. those, that you, you see that in the industry with some of these mock drafts, you see those guys going in those ranges. So I do think that there's a lot of talent here at the running back position and call this a placeholder for him for now, but I, I like Omar and Hampton. I am not sure whether I like him more than Caleb Johnson or more than Ollie Gordon at the moment right now. I think that'll play out over the season. But right now I'm going to go with uh, Marion Hampton. So I'll give him his due. He's uh, a third year running back at UNC. Uh, he'll be 22 in March. Um, so he, he's six foot, 220 pounds. So he's a big guy, 29 point. Base has him in the third rounder. We like that day two. And so far he's done really well this season. Um, he has 85 attempts, 563 yards, six touchdowns, 140 yards per game. Um, 155 yards scrimmage yards per game. So he's, you know, that 15 yards per game in, in receiving is, is nice as well. 6.6 yards per attempt, uh, 4.7 yards after contact per attempt, and a 0.33 missed tackles force per attempt. The, the, the stats that I like to look at, the uh, age adjusted stats over time, um, 2.18 yards per team play and a 0.33 dominator rating. That's, that's pretty good for this season. Um, like I said, he's been receiving, uh, he's gotten a good portion of their receiving share. So reception share, but it hasn't converted quite enough to yards yet. So he has, uh, 11 targets, nine receptions, 57 yards. So it's a little deceiving because like he is involved in the passing grade, but it hasn't converted yet to yards. Uh, I'd love to see that get bumped up a little bit there. Um, the one, the one, um, call out that I do, well, okay. So from, Yards per team play in year two and three, he's above the line. In reception yards, he's close in year two and year three, but not quite above the line. The one thing that I call out on on Omari and Hampton, which I don't see from Ollie Gordon or Caleb Johnson, is 
um, the rush yards are expected um, has been negative for him, yeah. um, which is a warning sign from that. So that, that's the, how, how, how good are you at a runner of the football? So it's taking into account like um, the, the offensive line space that it gives you and how, how much you would be expected to run, how much you're above that expectation on each of your carries. And so he's been below that, that threshold, that um, zero line that you'd want to see him above for his career. He's been below. So that is a warning sign. That's something to keep in mind. I have a feeling given how good the season is that he might sneak above that line by the end of the year. But some of these guys like Ashton Genty, Nicholas Singleton, these guys, um, even um, Ollie Gordon and Caleb Johnson are a bit above um, the line and Omarium Hampton has been below the line. So that, that's sort of one call out that I'd say, uh, maybe, maybe these other guys should maybe be above him. But right now, given the season that Omarion Hampton's having, I'll just, I just had him in there as my placeholder for, for this season. Yeah, no, I think that's completely fair. I like Amari and he's, he's, he has the production line there. I think the, the more argument is how bad Ollie has looked. I think that's one of those things there that we, that we're, we're going to talk about. We didn't have Ollie Gordon in our first round last time though. Like, so if you're going to go through the, that wraps up the first round, the one thing I do want to point out before we jump into to finish off this episode, we're going to talk about kind of notable guys. We're not done yet in terms of like guys moving in and out. There's possibilities of that. Uh, but Evan Stewart and Carson Beck fell out of our top, our, our top 12. Uh, Travis Hunter and Hampton jumped in. I think the big thing with Beck is we need to see it. I think he's been inconsistent as Jordan quarterback. We haven't seen that yet. The production there. We'll get into the quarterbacks. Evan Stewart is really the wait and see because he just the production, right? And I think one thing we mentioned on this, and, and everybody knows I love I love their Evan Stewart, but I did say that he could maybe have to come back for his senior year. Um, and I don't think that he's necessarily gonna come out. Only at 11 catches, 153 yards, and a touchdown right now. That's not good enough. I mean, as he progresses in the Big Ten, gets Ohio State, some of these other programs, Michigan, what is that going to look like? If he does well in those games, then we can talk about him maybe being back in that first. But right now, not looking great. I think he's he's definitely a prime candidate there. Um, anything on those two guys before we jump into the notables? Yeah, I mean, Evan Stewart's had the one, the one pretty good game, and there's a lot of potential there. Um, uh and it's just it's been frustrating for those of us that have selected him in our Debbie drafts to kind of see how this year's been played out. But uh, I think in the be- before the season started, we were kind of warning, uh, like um, you know, transfer from Texas A and M maybe didn't go smoothly. Tez Johnson's pretty good, um, you know, like there the, <laughs> there are some issues here. He, he definitely doesn't deserve to be in that very top tier, um, and so. This is this is kind of playing coming to fruition a little bit for us. Yeah. I think the Carson Beck piece was a, we were just guessing about who who yep. was going to be the top top quarterback, <laughs> and really the, just nobody had to really stand out. And I think for the most part, like I said in the beginning, I think we're still a little bit guessing here, and I think we we got to wait for the season to play out. Um, there's nothing to say that Carson Beck doesn't like have a phenomenal the rest of the season and then works his way back in there. But I think I think Quinn Ewers is probably kind of fits the bill as the QB one so far this year. Yeah, yeah, that, that's where I lean to. All right, let's go to notable. So here's some guys that we left off that people are gonna be mad about. They're always mad about Shador Sanders. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I had some guy in my mentions, and the last time we did this, is that why is he not in the first? Listen, because I'm scared to hell of what these guys are. Most of these guys here scare me as prospects because, you know, I think that there's still a lot of season to be played yet. And I think they can play their way into the first. Cam Ward is playing him way in the first. Miami hasn't played anybody yet. Like, they play Florida. Florida's a bad team. Florida also does not have a pass rush. I don't think we've seen Cam Ward play against a very good pass rush yet. That was one reason why he lost a lot at Oregon, or excuse me, in the Pac-12 at Washington State. I mean, that was really where he is, and that led to turnovers yet. We're not there with Cam Ward yet. I'm not ready to jump on that train, even though I loved him. Jake can tell you two years ago, I was all about Cam Ward. I was like, man, this kid is special. Um, and I still think I'm I'm the wait and see there. Shador, same thing. Milrow, same thing. Got a big game this week against Georgia. Drew Aller, same thing. Looks great. Film looks good. Is he coming back? What that looks like. Jackson Dart, he's played no one, but his numbers look great. I mean, they they put him up there. Garrett Nussmeyer, same thing. Looks great. What's he doing there? Um, that's really my takeaway. I like Shador. I think he's, he's made good throws and that. I think the leadership thing is the big thing. Like, you know, throwing his offensive line under the bus. I know we rectify that the next week, but how are teams going to look at that? I do think there's inherently some problems there with that, how teams are going to kind of look at that. Um, whether I think that's wrong or not. I mean, I, I laugh because, you know, he got kind of crapped on about the Colorado state quarterback and all that. 
I even said, like, I probably would have done the same thing. I'm petty like that, too. Like, I, I understand that. And I'm a freaking 35-year-old man. So, like, I get it from that perspective. Um, but I think these guys, I'm comfortable with these guys being outside of it. Like, I'm, you want to throw Shador in there and Cam in there right now? You can. I'm okay with that if that's fine. But I don't feel – I wouldn't feel comfortable drafting these guys right now. Yeah, the one thing I'd, I'd, I'd say is this is a good group of quarterbacks mm. – to have as a list of potential guys that can get into the first round. Yeah. I like this list. There's lots of things to like about this list, but we just need to, we just need to see it play out for this season. Because yeah. if you were, to, you, you, one of these guys could go off or a few of these guys could go off and, and become first round picks and the rest of them could go back to school or uh, might end up being, uh, you know, uh, day two picks uh, not first round picks. And, and we know the success of those. So, um, you know, like s- stats wise, uh, Jackson Dart and Cam Ward, even though they haven't played anybody are like jumping off the page to me right now. Um, looking at all the advanced stats that I look at. Um, so those guys right now so far kind of look pretty interesting from a numbers perspective. But what I'd say is Sanders, Milrow, Alar, Nussmeyer, they all are, are, are doing well in individual categories as well. Just, Dart and Wards look good across all the categories right now. And I think there's a lot of potential here. And we mentioned this a couple of times. It's just, there's no, like, there's no clear cut standouts that we're seeing right now. And so we just kind of have to watch for the rest of the season and see how it plays out and see who differentiates themselves over the season. Yeah, no, hundred percent there. All right, let's go into running backs. Ollie Gordon, we already mentioned, you have a love affair with Caleb Johnson. I put running back I twice do. for some reason. What the hell on the oh, graphic yeah. there? I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, Dylan Sampson, Devin Neal, uh, Jaden Ott is there. Uh, Ott's been dealing with an ankle thing, like I think from a production standpoint. I, I think it's unfair to kind of mention him. Devin Neal in Kansas, they've been having a rough ash year out there. I, there is some problems there. I wish he would have came out last year. Remember we talked about this, Jay? He should have came out last year and everything would be all forgotten there. Um, he didn't do that. I think the one thing for me, the one guy, I, I really like Dylan Sampson. I think Dylan Sampson could be that riser for us. Um, when you look at just a rushing standpoint, 69 attempts, 449 yards and 10 touchdowns. I think you could argue that he should have went at 112, 111. Like, I think there's an argument there. Mm-hmm. 15 missed tackles for us, 15 tenor explosive runs, looked really good against Oklahoma, has really come on there. I think if you want to knock him for anything, I mean, he has receiving, not a great receiver there, but I think he's doable there. He can do those things. Um, plays at Tennessee. Tennessee running backs in the Hupel era. What do we look at it from an NFL production standpoint? I know you don't want a helmet scout, but he's looked very good. 5'11", 201. Um, the size, maybe. Uh, hope you're over 200. I hope you weigh in at that. But uh, to me, Dylan stands out in this list. I like Ollie. I've just never seen it. Caleb, to me, I like Caleb. I don't know about the NFL side, but Dylan really stands out to me. Yeah, Dylan, I, I probably should have mentioned when I was talking about Ollie Gordon, Caleb Johnson, I probably should have mentioned D- Dylan Sampson this year too because he's having a great year. But Caleb Johnson is one that I'd probably highlight here. Uh, you know, Ollie Gordon had an incredible last year, um, yeah. and it, it was statistically was off, was great, was great. And he's getting enough per, uh, like um, opportunity this year. So there's definitely a chance that he has uh, something similar as a season as he has last year if he keeps getting this much opportunity. So there's, there's, there's definitely potential there for him to keep going. Caleb Johnson, I think is the big riser for me. I know you said Dylan Sampson for me this year, Caleb Johnson out of Iowa. Um, I'm really excited about him. A lot of the categories that I talked about Ashton Genty being first in Caleb Johnson is second or close to him uh, Mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of those categories. So I'm excited about him. So, you know, yards per team play, he's second uh, behind Ashton Genty. Uh, PFF rush grade, he's uh, fourth. Um, Ashton Genty's first. Um, uh, yards uh, after contact per attempt, Caleb Johnson's third. Ashton Genty's first. Uh, missed tackles, force per attempt, Caleb Johnson's tenth. Um, so he, in a lot of those categories that I mentioned before, um, for Ashton Genty, he is having a s- very similar type of production year to to Ashton Genty. Mm-hmm. He's got the four games. Genty's only got the three games. So it's it's a little bit of a difference there in the in the game, game count. But Caleb Johnson is is a huge riser for me this year uh, from Debbie perspective. I actually think that if he keeps playing this way, um, you know, his size the way he is, I think that he could be playing himself into that first round as one of these high end picks. 
Um, and so uh, the, what I just say is for the running backs, this is a good group of a good group of running backs. I think there's a huge tier at, uh, of good running backs that you can get and a lot of depth that we'll be able to have going into next year's next year's draft. Mm. And so it uh, maybe affords you the opportunity to select some of the guys that um, at wide receiver or quarterback a little bit higher because you'll have so much depth at running back that you'll everybody in the whole league of 12 players will probably be able to get one of yeah. these of these good running backs. No, hundred percent. No, you, you you nailed that there. I think that there is, and especially when you look at the dynasty market out there, the running back position very volatile. It always is, but I think there is. We need a class like this. We need that class to hit, Jay. Like I think this yeah. could be that class that we've been waiting for from a wide receiver perspective. Not a ton, you know. Trey Harris, very production. We've already kind of mentioned him though. Kyron Lacy looked good. I mean, he's definitely an LSU guy. You could tell that. Um, Evan Stewart, Tez Johnson. I, I, I'm glad we put on Ty Felton here from Maryland. Man, I'm telling you, he's looked pretty good this year. Fourth year kid, uh, 41 catches off 54 targets already in four games. So <laughs> that's already almost 600 yards, five touchdowns in four games against UConn, Michigan State, Virginia, Villanova. Not bad players. Like we're not talking about bad opponents here. We're talking about power five teams outside of Villanova. So you have to like that they're um, kind of versatile inside out. So Felton is a guy I think we need to start taking notice of. I think Felton's one of those guys, 6'2", 186, NFL teams are going to like. I think we need to start looking at that as being a riser. I do think that as well. Um, you know, really honest, to be honest, not very high on my radar coming into this season, Ty Felton. No. Um, and uh, Billy Edwards Jr., the quarterback, um, Caden Prather, um, and Ty Felton, they've had Maryland offense rolling. Yeah. Um, it looks good. Um the numbers wise and all those statistical categories that I look at, Trey Harris has been at the top of most of those. And Ty Felton has been keeping pace with Trey Harris there as well. Um, so I, I think both of those two guys are standing out substantially in a lot of these statistical categories. And I'm excited about them. Um, you know, Kyron Racy was a breakout this year. Evan Stewart and Tez Johnson have maybe been a little bit disappointed considering we were higher on the Oregon offense coming into the season, but still deserve to be some people that we're paying attention to and excited about. Um, hopefully we just get more production out of them coming forward. That's the key. You got to get more, a little bit more production there and go through it. All right. La last, uh, last thing here, as we go kind of through here, um, do you have any tight ends? Uh, I didn't necessarily make any big tight ends yeah. here for this. Um, you got any out there that you want to kind of mention real quick? Yeah. I mean, Colson Loveland, he looks legit. He seems legit. He's, he seems like the guy, um, Tyler Warren is having a really good year out of Penn state. I'm excited about what he's been able to do. And Orante uh, uh, Gadsden out of Syracuse yeah. who was injured last year. He is kind of playing tight end in a wide receiver body. So he has that, that potential to be a really good um, fantasy tight end for us. And, and so I'm excited that, about him. Um, there's a couple other guys um, like Bryson Nesbitt and, and, and some of the other guys that could um, break out. But the, I would say um, Tyler Warnin, Colston Loveland, and Aronda Godston. There's, there's, there's another guy at Bowling Green called um, Harold Fannin. Mm -hmm. um, that, that has been performing as well. Um, that are, those are those kind of like the interesting guys for me that so far this season. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how it guy plays out. I think you've nailed with Tyler Warren. I think he's the biggest riser out there. Um, Gatson's interesting. Cause I wonder what he is. Is he a tight end? Is he a wide receiver? What does that look like? Um, from that perspective there. Uh, but yeah, net, you nailed it there. Luke Lachey just haven't had a very good year at Iowa. That Iowa offense has been weird. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so just production hasn't been there yet. All right. Well, Hey, that's it. We wrapped it up. First round of a rookie draft. Talking about some notable guys there, kind of risers there. We are going to bring you these mock drafts as we go throughout the year. De definitely probably monthly, just kind of seeing who rises, fallers, kind of guys like that. Um, what we're looking at and, and what do you guys say? What do you guys think down there in the comments? If you're watching on YouTube, if you're on the podcast, you know, jump into our discord, our Patreon, those things to talk to us about this, or Hey, you know, leave a comment, let us know how we're doing, leave a five-star review. And then we will go from there. So appreciate it, Jay. We'll, we'll catch you guys next week.